getting the white pieces, facing the billy goat. It is going to be time to try out the London. We're going to be ignoring this early knight c6 move, just playing knight f3. And now we're back at it into the Chigorin. See the two knights. This is going to be playing with e3. And they basically have two plans. Playing with a bishop inside the pawn chain or outside the pawn chain. Or going for the sweet a6 that's not covered in the course. But problem with a6 is that it's not influencing the center and it's giving us idea to play with c4 and people always have this kind of question of like when the heck are we supposed to play with c4 in the London because everyone says c3 is good all the time but c4 should be played occasionally so when this knight is on c6 in front of the c pawn and there's no pressure on the d4 square it's usually a good sign to play c4. Also, your knight kind of has to be on b1, so you want to follow it up with uh, knight c3. It doesn't make much sense to play uh, c4 with a knight being on d2, so you want to make sure to follow it up with knight c3, usually, when you're having that question. So, play z6, just develop the knight, and uh, okay, expecting, like, dc, bishop takes. We'll also take on d5, honestly, if I want to play, like, a Carlswell structure. I think I might be taking just for the sake of getting like, uh, you know, uh, typical game kind of. And there was a funny point be made by Duke uh, that uh, when you're weaker, the problem is that nobody plays the open Sicilian. And when you're stronger, the problem is that uh, everyone plays the open Sicilian, which I think is actually like a pretty fair point. So, uh, okay, on G5, just stepping back. Now the game is pretty similar to the Queen's Gambit decline. You guys are right. Expect, I mean, except, oops, that, <laughs> that is this knight in front of the C pawn, which is actually quite misplaced. And we just get a better version of the Queen's Gambit decline. C bishop b4. So I can play a3. He's going to take and then he's going to play knight e4, cash in the bishop. So maybe just bishop d3 directly. Makes some sense. We could play bishop e2. Yeah, to be honest, I'm not sure here. I think it's pretty close decision. I think I'm just going to go a3 and take with the rook. Just step back. Knight e4, rook to c1. Aiding the rook, just stepping back. I don't mind him taking because we open up the rook and he's... And I have a hard time finding a safe spot for the king. So, our bishop's pretty active. This bishop is quite passive. We have nice control over the center. I think white definitely should be better in this position. So, um... Not easy to make any moves as black now. And if he goes g4, we have tempting choice between knight h4 and knight d2. I think knight h4 is better. It's a bit more aggressive. <clears throat> it kind of looks weird that we're going to be locking in the file, but I think that's best. We play queen f6 instead, which I wasn't able to guess. But, um, could either do bishop e2 or takes. Mm. I think I just want to play bishop e2. I feel like he's struggling to do anything with this bishop, honestly. Do I want a castle short? Mm, not quite, but uh, maybe we'll have to go for it. This is a pretty clear signal that he's preparing Long Castle. And for that reason, we may want to start pushing pawns already on the queen side. So just get uh, a nice little boost in this kind of game that we're going to get because... Uh, we're entering a phase where uh, we're going to be having opposite castlings, meaning that it's basically all about being some kind of a race and the faster side will usually win. So just need to waste no time. Just start attacking the enemy king. Go b5. Hit the knight. Open up the rook. See how uh, well placed the rook on c1 actually ends up being in these c4 lines. And uh, okay, knight a7. Could go b6, could go queen a4. Knight e5, also not bad move. 
Queen a4, king b8, uh, rook c7, king takes, queen a7 is like pretty funny line, but perhaps not as good as I would like. So knight a7, maybe b6, kind of forcing knight c6, and then could do queen a4, cb6. Oh, never mind, just goes to e7, which I think is worse. So we have this little move. King b8. Hmm. I go queen c2, I'm kind of forcing c6. I think we like that because uh, on c6 we have queen a4. And compared to the previous line on king b8, we will have b6 as an idea. Although I miss there will be knight c8 at the end of that variation, I think we still have. Really nice choice with... Uh, 95. B6 looks pretty nice, but king b8 and then knight c8. Well, yeah, I'm actually not super sure how to proceed there, so I think just knight e5 is stronger. Idea to do this, bring the bishop, something like that. I mean... Probably we're winning with anything in this position, but uh, just feels nice to bring more pieces into the attack. A4 would be really slow. Pushing this would be like, let's say, a good idea, undermining the pawn, but we just, we can play it much faster, it feels. Just like takes, bishop b5. Hmm... I think we just open it up. Give a check and should be made in like few moves. Oh, he takes with a knight. Now, this could be pretty strong move. The knight is pinned. So, I guess he plays like... King B8 or something and... Really looking forward to play that move. Because knight e5 allows queen c7. But basically any knight move allows queen c7. And king takes knight c6 should be... Pretty juicy win. Hitting the rook. Also the problem is for him that his rooks are not connected. And he's gonna drop like a lot of material now. Or he's getting mated one of these two. If he takes my knight, he's for sure getting mated, and against that, I can at the very least go knight a5 and pick up the rook, but queen b3 should lead to faster win, like king a8, and check, check on a7. King c7, I can do... Uh, Could do many things, like knight a7 is easiest, or knight e7, but knight e5 also tempting. King d8 and uh, queen b6, king e7, uh, queen b4, king d8, queen d6, so I think I like knight e5. Just to go for like the forcing mate, basically. Giving a check, this file is closed. This or that square, um, king d6, queen b4, and on um, king d8, queen b6, forcing the king to e7, then we go back, queen d6, and he's gonna be trapped in uh, a little box, so that looks like a pretty forcing uh, checkmate to me. Yeah, we see king d8, uh, again, many ways to win, but I think this one is the smoothest. King e7 trying to run away, and we're like, wait a minute, you're not running anywhere? <laughs> Controlling fa square via the x-rays, and uh, now we have this nice final touch. No moves other than blocking with a bishop, and uh, this is going to be basically a checkmate, so we managed to get the win. All right, we're getting the white pieces, and... Gonna be opening up with queen spawn. We see the most common reply. Just gonna start with the knight and now getting our beloved Lana system on the board. 
expecting a move such as knight c6, but we apparently end up facing the bishop g4 sideline, which is actually mentioned in the course, both in this position and after knight f6, bishop g4. We mentioned this um, and covered the move knight e5, which is really why this move is, uh, is not great for black and uh, why it should be getting a pretty big advantage. Now, after knight bd7, we have a choice between either taking followed by e4, which honestly looks pretty good. Or we could uh, play the move uh, f3 and after like bishop f5, g4, h4, just try to hunt that. So I think we're going to be playing this one. So just hitting the bishop and... Uh, yeah, just going for the for the chase here. Idea to play h4 followed by this little trick of trapping the bishop. Now, a lot of people may blunder by going knight x on e5. They're supposed to push the h pawn one step or two. Both moves will run into knight x on g6, and black is gonna have a pretty terrible weakness that we should be able to capitalize on, but. Again, like pretty common mistake people take, forgetting about the fact that we can take this pawn and we're going to be attacking the knight while threatening this. Obviously talking about this position and uh, it's just a double threat. So he finds h6, just going to be covering, uh, I mean, taking there, followed by uh, a move such as probably queen b3. Uh, I mean d3. I don't know how to speak, sorry for that. Hitting the g6 pawn. Hey, thank you for the sub, Jonathan and Steel Mountain. Appreciate you guys. Thank you for that. Welcome. Doing a bit of rating climb, so I'm going to be taking mostly questions that are like game related. But if you want to let me know about anything, feel free and I'm going to get to your uh, in between games. Worst key scenario. Um. Uh, black goes for king f7 which is basically the only way to protect the weak g6 pawn now we could be rushing with the move h5 that i think is playable but it's not like a must could also play like knight c3 idea to follow it up with uh, long castle I think we just keep that knight e3. Might have had a similar game where I played h5 and it ended up being a small inaccuracy. So I think we're just going to be prioritizing development this time and would also think about pushing in the center with uh, e4. Now, another idea could be g5, but the problem is that my rook will be hanging in this variation. So for that reason, I'm considering bishop h3, maybe g5. This is always kind of good, but uh, not so easy to follow it up. And yeah, I just think it's time to push now in the center because I don't really mind the fact that, you know, he could grab a pawn with knight g4. We get to establish very nice pawns in the center, follow it up with uh, attack against his king after something like um, queen f3, if he goes for that, hitting the knight and um, threatening pretty unpleasant uh, discovery so tries to develop bishop b4 maybe ideas to take mm. this is always a move could play queen f3 could do bishop h3 as well just preparing g5 we have to think about it this way so we're gonna go bishop h3 and then he wants to take and now if i take with the queen his point is knight e4 now, in that position, we could go back to f3, hitting the knight, and honestly, that looks winning. No matter what he plays, g5 will come on the next move, which is pretty much going to be winning a piece. Also, if I really want, I can take this way. Weakening my king a little bit, but it's not, not really like um, going to matter in these situations, so... Um, I prefer though, just sacrifice the pawn, keep the king safer, 
Go through key, just trying to slowly castle this way. Could still go for g5. Um, also, there is this e5 idea. I feel like e5 works a little bit better now because to me it feels like we can combine it later on with an h5 move and I see the square being pretty weak. Unlike in the previous case where opponent could try to create some counter play here, I think it's getting pretty one-sided and I'm expecting something like knight e5, get to trade off the knights, push the h-pawn and yeah, after that, his rook on e8 is actually, maybe would have helped more on age 8 because we're going to be having a huge threat of playing queen g6. But now, can he actually get away with g5? That is something that we need to figure out first. There is check, king g8. I don't see an easy follow up there. Maybe we want to start this way. And after that, we're also threatening e6. So I think this is better. Threatening to take and threatening to also fork. We're both uh, undermining his king side and initiating these type of ideas. I could also start with the intermezzo, just give a check. But I can also take on g5, I think both are winning. I think we just go bishop takes, go for the simplest. e6, ed7 is for sure working, but no need to play this subtle and uh, this could be a pretty nice little idea. <laughs> King takes, queen g6. Trying to think whether we can sack the queen in any ways, but I don't see it working. Now rook df1, also very much winning, obviously. Maybe just go for the simple e6 and <laughs> that's like pretty much it. I think we go e6 and no need to like do anything crazy. He's gotta like move the king. Depending on where he goes, I mean, he probably has to go to g8 because otherwise I can start checking or take on g6 intermezzo as well. Threatening mate. So yeah, now just uh, ed7. Could take this as well. Um, Yeah, I think taking on e7 might be a little bit more precise. It's not like it really matters though. Follow it up with this. This way he doesn't even get to win the pawn with check. Attacking the rook. Queen g6 is on my radar. Running bishop e6, queen h5 mate. Let's see what he has in mind to deal with that. Probably rook f6. And then this is simple move. Against the check, we simply go king b1. Yeah, as I was saying, just move the king away. Same threat remains in the position. Maybe he has queen back, but it's still like down a piece in the end game. It's definitely hopeless for black. Okay, finds rook f6. That was a good move. Now I can just go queen g5, which is like really simplest. If we can trade queens, that's basically Similar to resignation for black and uh, also hitting the pawn. Take it with a check. Could also bring last piece into the game. Opponent cannot have more of this and uh, decides to resign. So we managed to get a game. Okay. Getting a new game. Gonna be trying a little London system, I was about to say, but it is England time, as you can see. Gonna be accepting and play knight f3, protect the pawn, 
expecting queen e7 and we'll go bishop f4 just following recommendation from the course uh hit the queen now here play the move knight c3 important do not go bishop c3 because that's where most of the beginners get lost and like as this move you take they take this way you can resign or another trap is bishop b4 queen d2 black uh, takes you take with the queen thinking that uh, okay i'm gonna protect the a1 rook but then uh <laughs> they just have checkmate in one so as long as you play knight c3 in this position you're avoiding a quick loss and here now they have a choice between bishop b4 or knight b4 in case of knight b4 we can play the move knight d4 cover that and if uh after knight d4 they end up playing c5 it's important to throw in rook b1 in their mezzo and after queen a3 knight db5 queen a5 both a3 and also knight d5 directly are completely winning so here it's basically a 50 50 from what i've studied people play both these lines either knight or bishop to b4 so you should be prepared equally enough against both now I'm just gonna do rook b1 and queen a3 will play the move knight d5 which is my main recommendation they could also go for the queen sack which is actually something that i um played with the black pieces uh, against andrea in our otb game but uh sadly to say it's not a very good line uh and also she was kind of crushing me in it um but uh yeah opponents and what most of your opponents will play is the move queen a3 where i think the most common move is knight b5 but simply stronger is just knight d5 hitting both b4 and c7 it's just a way more useful move than knight b5 and there is only one trap that you need to be familiar with in this position after bishop d2 black can also play bishop f a5 but hardly anyone does that uh, most people take and then they go king d8 or queen a2 if i was forced to play this variation as black i think the only trap that you can go is queen takes on a2 because taking on c7 is actually losing in that position but after rook d1 white is uh, having a great position but i think most people play king d8 from what i've studied here and um yeah, we just follow it up with e4, bishop e2, short castle, when they take just rook d1. And king is a big problem for black in these lines. So, this is a better idea. The trap is that, uh, yeah, see here, he goes for it. If I take on c7 and uh, grab the rook, he can take. Only way to block is queen d1. And we're going to be getting into an endgame where my knight is trapped in the corner and... They can just uh, go and win it. But after a simple move, rook d1, this is sort of forced. You can go e4, bishop e2, and uh, this is like a plus two according to the engine. It is definitely not winning yet, but I think very promising and pretty tough to play for black. Sure, they are like up a pawn, but it's tough for them to like even make any moves in these lines, so... I'm gonna go e4, bishop e2, and castle against pretty much no matter what they do. Uh, it's even tough to like find a plan for black here, like how they are developing light squared bishop, like b6, bishop b7. So we can in d7 square, they could potentially get made at here uh, if they are doing that. And uh, other than that, yeah, they'll probably play like knight e7, it's something that I would expect. We actually see b6 on the board. I wonder whether is there any chance we can get to mate him in the middle. That would actually make a lot of people that lose against the England regularly would make them pretty happy. <laughs> so I'm thinking to like move the knight and hit the queen, but then they have queen back protecting. So here like knight b6 seems to be pretty promising. Threatening to mate and hitting the rook. Do we have better? I don't see better. Like here, king takes, queen d6, king c8, queen d7, uh, king b8, queen d8, queen f8. No, I mean, just knight takes on b6 is simplest, I think. Although, 
maybe win a5 would be getting rid of the queens but that's like a dead lost end game which we shouldn't really mind the okay, problem with knight g5 is that i don't really love it since it's uh not threatening mate but it can be a move he could do that like why not he does king a knight c7 king f8 kind of want to go for the mating idea highlighting power of these pieces so i think just gonna go knight b6 knight g5 again completely winning this position is like so bad for black that normally you're gonna have more than uh one good move but i think this is highlighting pretty well why the king in the middle is misplaced here because of these threat on the next move so He also has knight takes e5, which is uh, fair to mention. I actually forgot about that idea. I guess we should still be winning there, but uh, this is, I think, illustrating it best. So he's going for this move, trying to like uh, exchange queens. But can we just play uh, c3? They like reinforce that idea again. Like easiest would be to exchange and uh, pick up the rook, go like rook a1. Yeah, but do we want to make it a little bit more fun and play C3? I think you guys like fun games, so I'm going to play C3. Threatening this move again. This rook is still under attack. I couldn't mate in that position because uh, the queen was pinned. If that was confusing... This move is not allowed because uh, we're pinned on this diagonal. So I'm playing c3 just to unpin, closing in uh, this diagonal. And now queen d7 becomes a threat again. Okay, we see d6. Can simply take, sack the knight, could take the free rook. I think at this point it's just a matter of like taking the free pieces and uh, going ED. Not even gonna try to calculate any fancy lines. There's no need for such things. Just open up the position against the naked king. We can finish development with castling. We're having the extra exchange plus we've got a huge attack which definitely should be... Making it pretty obvious why the Anglon Gambit, Gambit is uh, quite dubious. So King E8, there's still like no immediate mate. There is this threat in the position that we don't really mind. I think it's time to just finish our development, get castled. Don't try to force it. I see a pretty nice funny motive though after like 97. Maybe we can go bishop b5, act like we blundered. He just plays knight f6. So the motive there was uh, queen takes, queen d7, and then uh, back rank checkmate. No, that was actually not working because queen was there. So <laughs> <laughs> never mind. Uh... And just push and play for queen d7. Hitting the knight. Again, I just love about this variation that our king is so safe and the enemy king is just like completely naked. Throwing the check. King go queen c8. So I feel like queen c8, king e7, rook d7, king uh, e6. We should be having some kind of mate. Like rook d8, queen d7. Okay, I think that's pretty nice. 
Let's try to show it on the board. Yeah, so we go here, give a little check. He's gonna go to e6, then we're gonna hit him with d8. He's forced to go back, and then queen d7 is gonna be like a pretty nice picture. Okay. Check him again while protecting my queen. So notice that my queen is completely safe on c8. Also, main point of this is that the king is now unable to run away and we're able to just uh, get the checkmate on d7. So uh, I think that might have been a pretty precise game. Are you guys curious to see like a game review? Not that this is super relevant, whether the game was well played or not, but... We actually got a 92 and we made also like a brilliant move, which was knight b6. Curious whether there was a knight g5 better. No, knight b6 top line. Come on, guys. Stop trolling me. Stop trolling me, guys. Knight g5 was... I told you it's still winning, but... Was not as good. Getting the white pieces. Gonna be trying a little London system. And important against e6 that may be preparing the c5 push. To start with the second move, bishop f4. Now we're most likely going to be back into some kind of e6 line. Going to go e3. Yes, bishop d6. Uh, going to be playing the move knight p to d2. And okay, we do get to see the move c5, which is actually a little bit surprising for this rating range. Because we're playing still below 1400, and I normally don't expect them to play like the c5 main lines, but... You can run into this stuff from time to time. I'm still expecting mainly to run against the Chigorin, but... I'm like definitely okay playing these possessions. It's just that I don't find them so common. And okay, opponent takes, goes queen b6, hitting the pawn. Now, you definitely have many ways of dealing with this. Normally, the algorithm that we have in the course is saying that whenever rook b1 is like a legal move and not losing any pawns that is the move so it's gonna be doing exactly that here just develop the bishop onto the natural square try to castle short an idea for my opponent could be knight a5 and try to exchange the bad bishop but i think maybe we can try the move queen e2 against knight a5 and control this square one more time and try to avoid it Expecting him to just go back to like normal play and castle and we're just like slightly better because this bishop is way more active than the one on d7, but it looks like he's actually trying to play for a similar idea, so just gonna do queen e2, taking the b5 square under control, goes knight g6, just gonna sidestep his attack, preparing short castle, if he plays a6, bishop b5, we can't really avoid a trade, I think, at that point, but at least we're going to be able to double up his pawns, so that shouldn't be a problem. We see knight h5 not only threatening this move, but also knight f4. So we can either play queen e3 or take this knight. I'm not like a huge fan of giving up light squared bishop, so I think we're going to be probably playing the move queen e3. Hmm. Yeah, I think queen e3 is the way to go. Discovering that f5 doesn't work as we just collect it. Taking advantage of the pin. Preparing this move next. We don't really mind him taking because we just uh, open up the rook. Now this is huge threat because he's going to be forced to take back with the f pawn and he's going to get like a pretty ugly structure. C bishop e7. Uh, yeah, I think just taking, forcing the ugly structure is worth it. Yes, we do sort of give up our nice bishop, but after this move, we already have a lot of threats, like takes. If he goes there, there's knight f7. If he castles, there's bishop hanging. So 
Very tough for Black to play already. I think he simply lost. Yeah, goes for Long Castle, which is somewhat understandable, but told you that's allowing the fork. And we managed to pick up the exchange. I think I'm going to take the, uh, perhaps the rook just so I can, uh, yeah, I wanted to like deflect his rook, perhaps taking the other one was better here just to make his other rook passive, but okay, he's not really like making that big of a difference here. Uh, we can simply cast a short. And yeah, on moves such as bishop g5, we can easily play f4, get rid of this bishop, and I could try to attack him on the king side. I could also try to play it positional and just like exchange all the pieces since we're having the extra exchange. I think that is gonna be my uh, choice here. Just play knight e5, try to uh, trade knight for bishop even, and uh, whenever you're like a material, the easiest way to make progress is. Just to trade as many pieces as you can. G4, just take back this way. It's like not really a problem. Not gonna pre moving it because I think that might be pretty confusing to some of you watching. So, uh, just gonna play it normal. I've got like a huge knight here, but I think we can just give it away because we're weakening the e6 pawn even though his bishop was not doing much for the sake of trading and converting the extra exchange uh, i think it's definitely worth it I'm gonna push f5 hitting this just don't take this way because queen hangs but take it uh, like this and hitting d5 running f6 position is definitely completely winning could give a check could also take the pawn could also go queen g7. There's only one trick to like not allow that uh, f6 runs into bishop h2 and he wins my queen. So I just need to keep an eye on that and you should be good. Um, yeah, I think I'll just collect the pawn here. Just try to keep it simple. King c7, maybe give another check. Push the f pawn. At this point, this is just like such a strong pawn. <laughs> you can just literally push it down the board. Okay, rook to e8. Uh, against that, I'm thinking to just go here. He can take, I take, he can take pawn on b2, but I assume there should be some kind of mate. So not even gonna calculate it. I think. <laughs> Just gonna play it this way. It kinda has to go for the pawn grab. But this might be a very easy win. I kinda like F6 though because it's Preparing a pretty classy idea, which is rook e7, taking advantage of the fact that the bishop is pinned. And yeah, that will be a pretty quick mate now. It's forced to go back. Pick up the pawn and then will be mate on d7, so. Managed to cash in this game. Hey everybody, thanks a lot for making it this far into the video. And if you're interested in uh, checking out my London system course, will be the first link uh, in the description. So thanks again, and I'll see you around on the channel. Take care.